having Asian Paints Laura's Labs, Navin Fluorin Adul Limited, Divis Laboratories Limited, and many more as their domestic customers, and exporting its product to over 25 countries, including the United States, China, Germany, Japan, South Africa, and the United Kingdom. Tattoo Jindan Pharma Chemical Limited, aka TCPL, is indeed a big player among the chemical industries. Tattoo Jindan Pharma Chemical Limited was founded in 1996, and it produces a comprehensive portfolio of structure directing agents, or SDAs, phase transfer catalysts, or PTCs, electrolyte salts for batteries, pharmaceutical and agrochemical intermediaries, and other specialty chemicals. The company got listed on the secondary market on July 29th of 2021 with a 114% premium from its issue price. The 500 crores issue got subscribed 180 times and became the most oversubscribed IPO of 2021 at that time. The issue constituted of 275 crores offer for sale by the promoters and a fresh issue of 225 crores. Tattu Chintan is led by its promoters Chintan Shah, Shagar Somani and Ajay Patel and the management has over 24 years of experience in the chemical industry. Being a leading chemical manufacturer is not an easy job. Tattu Chintan operates in the space of niche specialty chemicals and it is a globally recognized specialty chemical player with several market leading products in its portfolio. The company is the largest commercial manufacturer of structure directing agents for zeolites in India and the second largest globally serving a diverse range of industries worldwide. Looking at the product portfolio, the company has manufactured over 154 products which can be further classified into four broad categories. Number 1. Largest and only manufacturer of structure directing agents which accounts for 40% of the total revenue for the company. That is, SDS are quaternary salts, which are chemicals that help in the formation of specific channels and pores during zeolite synthesis. So, zeolites are primarily used as catalysts and absorbents. And when combined with the transition metals like copper and iron, it helps in selective catalytic reduction. This is currently considered as one of the preferred technology for emission control in automotive applications as well. Secondly, PTC or phase transfer catalyst. This accounts for 27% of the company's total revenue with 48 products under the PTC product portfolio. PTCs are widely used in green chemistry applications and in a wide range of industrial processes. Thirdly, Electrolyte salts for supercapacitor batteries. This accounts for 1% of the company's revenue with a total of 6 products in this portfolio. The electrolyte salts are used to make supercapacitor batteries which are used in vehicle batteries and other batteries. The company is the leading producer of electrolyte salts for supercapacitor batteries in India. And fourth and final one we have PASC or Pharmaceuticals, agrochemicals, and other specialty chemicals that accounts for 30% of the total revenue. The products manufactured under this category are used in the manufacture of various pharmaceutical and agrochemical products as intermediates, disinfectants, and catalysts and solvents. In addition, they also manufacture specialty chemicals under this category that are used in dyes and pigments, personal care ingredients flavor and fragrance sectors. Let's try to understand the key strength of the company. Firstly, when it comes to sales, the company derives 71% of the majority of its revenue through exports in which Germany, USA and China together accounting for 54.20% of its revenue. Next important aspect about the company is its research and development infrastructure. Tattva Chindan has a dedicated R&D facility recognized by DISR at Vadodara, Gujarat. The company has developed 53 products in the last 3 years which contributed 6.5 crores revenue for the company. The company runs two manufacturing sites in Gujarat at Ankleshwar and Dahej, both of which are conveniently placed near the Hasira port. These plants have a total installed reactor capacity of 280 kiloliters and 17 assembly lines. Even though we are seeing faster adoption of electric vehicles, the decrease in demand for 
SDS will be limited. This is because SDS are used to control polluting gases from automobiles, refineries, industries, etc. A typical passenger vehicle would require about 100 gram of SDS, while commercial vehicles would require about 5 kilograms of SDS. Since major usage of companies SDS would be towards the heavy vehicles, marines, etc. Due to this, the demand for SDS will stay afloat. Now, let's try to understand the future growth prospects of the company. If we look at Tata Chintan's aggregate manufacturing capacity, it has increased at a CAGR of 20.59% over the years. From an aggregate sector capacity of just 82 kiloliter and zero assembly lines in financial year 2010, it has expanded its manufacturing capability to 280 kiloliter reactor capacity and 17 assembly lines as of financial year 2021. Not only that, they are also planning to expand its Dahej manufacturing facility and upgrade its R&D infrastructure with a capex of 170 crores. This is because they are planning to increase its offering in current product segments as well as diversify into new product segments which have attractive growth opportunities. Being a major player in specialty chemicals, it comes with a lot of key risk as well. Let's take a look at them one by one. Given the nature of its products, Tattwa Chintan's customers have high standards for product quality as well as delivery schedules. Adherence to quality standards is a critical factor in its manufacturing process because any flaws in company's product or failure to meet the technical specification of its customers may lead to cancellation of orders placed by its customers. Tathujindan currently relies on a small number of suppliers for certain raw materials. At the same time, the company does not have long-term agreements with such suppliers. Any loss or reduction in the amount of raw materials obtained from the suppliers could have a negative impact on the company's business. An increase in raw material cost could also have a negative impact on operating results and financials because the price of its product is generally fixed at the time of purchase order. Due to this, the company may not be able to pass the increase in raw material cost to its customers as well. Next key risk is the customer concentration risk. That is, Tattu Chintan's clients often have long-term relationship with the company. Even though that is the case, the company does not have any long-term agreements with them. As a result, the company's success is heavily reliant on its ability to maintain positive connections with customers and suppliers. While the company has a huge number of clients, a large portion of its revenue is based on a small number of customers. For example, in the financial year 2021, its top 10 customers contributed for 60% of its revenue from operations. Also, high dependency on R&D and introduction of innovative products. In order to maintain competitive in its market, the company must develop manufacture new products that should meet regulatory standards and receive approvals. The company's ongoing R&D investments for new products and process may result in higher costs without a promising increase in revenues in future. Let's dive into shareholding patterns of the company now. As on September 2021, the promoters held 79% of stake in the company. Financial institutional investors and domestic institutional investors held 3.5% and 7.3% respectively. At the same time, the public held only 9.9% of stake in the company. Now, let's have a look at the financials of the company. As on March 2021, company's revenue from sales stood at 300 crores, which was only at 136 crores in 2018. In the same year, operating profit was only at 23 crores, but as on 2021, it has almost tripled to 66 crores. The company had only net profit of 12 crores in 2018, and it went on to touch 52 crores in March 2021. Interestingly, company's ROC is stood at 28.1% and ROE is at 36.9%. Also, recently, TCPL declared its September quarter results were net profit of TCPL rose 810% to Rs 32.1 crore in quarter ended in September 2021, which was only at Rs 3.56 crore during the previous quarter ended in September 2020. Not only that, sales rose 
105 percentage to rupees 123 crores as against rupees 60.4 crores during the previous quarter of 2020 in September. Now that we have understood the business of the company, let's try to understand if the company is overvalued or undervalued at its current price. That is, let's try to understand the valuation. At the current price of rupees 2649 per share and the price to earning ratio is at 113 which is a bit higher when the industry P is just between 70 and 90. However, looking at the demands for SDS is expected to rise further as environmental regulations are tightening and emerging of new applications, Tattu Chintan being India's only commercial manufacturer and the world's second largest SDA manufacturer is well positioned to benefit from this shift. The company's premium valuation when compared to its peers in specialty chemicals is justified by the high entry barriers offered by SDAs. Thanks to an increasing demand within Asia-Pacific region and abroad, some industry experts say that TCPL's exports will touch at least 88% in the next three years. In conclusion, we believe that TCPL is a candidate to watch out for in the future. So, what are your thoughts on Tattu Chindan Pharma Chemicals? Do let us know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, subscribe and share as that would motivate us to bring more such videos. Thank you for watching. This is the Market Analyst. We wish you a great day ahead.